how to find and wholesale the probate list. Guys, my name is Rick Ginn, and today's video, we're gonna go deep in the probates, and I'm gonna show you what a probate is, actually how to get the list, and most importantly, to market to it. And if you stay with me to the end, I'm gonna share the little known secret that's given me a huge advantage over everybody else with probates. And if you stay to the end, I will share it at the end. But before I get into it, make sure you do me a favor. If you like the content, make sure you smash that like button, you hit that subscribe button to continue to receive the the absolute best information on wholesaling today. So what is a probate? A probate is nothing more than a formal legal process when somebody passes away who owns assets like stocks, bonds, bank accounts, real estate, cars, boats, RVs, you name it, because the reality if someone's passed away, it is impossible for a deceased person to transfer the title of any of these assets. So they created what they call probate, which is a formal process that goes through your county probate and they follow the wishes of the deceased person through what they call a will. If there's not a will, it's a bit more complicated and they find the most responsible party. And that person is known as the personal representative or the executor. And their job is to finish up the final affairs of the deceased person as they see fit due to the will. Now, the first thing you gotta understand is probates happens at a county level. So I want you to understand there's over 3,100 counties. It changes every day, it seems to speak. And I cannot memorize and give specific constructions for 3,100 plus counties. So rule number one is you need to understand how your county and your state operate probates. The really cool part is most of these documents are online. There's a process and all you have to do is go to your county courthouse online, look for the probate section and read it. It's not that complicated. You need to understand what the rules are and at least get familiar with it so you can help people in probate. So that is where you start out. The second part is find your local probate county court. Now, usually all the other criminal and everything else is tied to that courthouse, know where it is, know how to get there, and most importantly, go pay them a visit. Now, if you want to learn the right questions to ask at a probate court, at freewholesaling.com, we teach you how to pull these probate lists, and this is where you're going to go to get it. Now, the whole debate is, can I get it online or can I get it in person? And a lot of people say, well, I can't get it online, Rick. They're like, that, that sucks. And the reality is, it's actually a good thing because that means you're going to have less competition. You can actually help out more people. It doesn't matter if you get it online or you get it in person, make sure you get familiar with your local probate court. Now let's talk about getting a list. Let's talk about the action steps you need to actually pull a probate list. Now I'm going to give you instructions on how to go in person because that's typically the hardest way to do it. So let's just go ahead and get it out of the way. So guys, don't overthink this. The way I learned probates, I'm going to walk you through right now. I need you to find your local probate county court and go in there. And then basically they usually have like a receptionist or like a service person and say, listen, I'm trying to pull the last 30 days of probates open in this county. Can you help me direct me to find this information? It's that simple. Some people are going to be super helpful. Some are going to be nasty to you. Welcome to my world. To overcome resistance, you must be persistent. It doesn't mean you be a bully. It means you ask nicely. The nicer you are to people, the more you'll get in life. If you try to run people over because you get frustrated and you get aggravated, it's just going to make it worse. That's your ego taking over. You know you got to lose your ego. So, now we're going to go and request a list. They might call it a docket. A docket is just a fancy word, a legal word for a master list. Now, sometimes you're going to hear confusing things like, well, we don't keep an organized list or I that information, it's case by case. Do you have a, a deceased person's last name? Now, obviously, you don't have an individual person's last name. You're trying to get information for that entire docket, aka list. And just keep asking nicely. And sometimes you can ask a supervisor. A lot of them will ask you, what are you doing with this information? Now, they assume you're trying to sell it and say, listen, I'm just doing some research of probates within this county to see how many people actually pass away. And I'm just trying to run some numbers on it and get a good feel for it. The reality is you say, listen, I want to buy every one of those houses on there. But the problem is if you say that, they will judge you instantly. So if you're young, which a lot of you watching this, you're young, let them know you're doing a school research paper. Listen, either way, you're doing a research paper and the school is called Flip with Rick and you're going to figure out how to get this done. But if you share too much information, you get judged and you might be one of those greedy entrepreneurs trying to take advantage of the system. No, understand you are a U.S. taxpayer in your county or the county you're doing investing in and you're requesting the list. Your tax dollars pay for this. Don't feel guilty about it. There's no guarantee you're going to get the list, but you got to make the effort for it. And you're going to get resistance because they're just trying to shoo you away. Because if 50 people go in and ask for the list per week and they kick 48 out, make sure you're one of the two that actually stick 
sticks to it and you become persistent. You're not going to get anywhere if you just walk away. Actually, studies show if you can overcome at least two objections, most people will give you what you want in life. But most people, 90 plus percent, walk away on the first no. And so humans are programmed for that. So if you know that and you study with me and Zach, you understand at Flip With Rick, we teach you how to get through this. You have to get through those first two initial no's. And here's the key to it. Build rapport just like you do with your motivated sellers and compliment the employee. Remember, they're just trying to get by. They want to pay their bills. They're in your community. Take care of them. You're going to see kids pictures. You're going to see their dogs pictures. Use that as leverage to gain and build rapport and get a conversation. And once they see you're just like them, they're more willing to help you out. Here's my theory. If you're going in person, people ask, how often do you go? When I initially did probates in my first three years, I went twice a week. I know that sounds excessive, but you need to understand speed kills. And I know that's a terrible statement, but it's true. Whoever connects with the motivated seller in a probate first usually has the upper hand on the deal. How do you connect with them first? Make sure you get the freshest leads going coming out. You don't want six month and 12 month old leads. They're junk. They're already stale. They've already finished probate and the properties have been sold or they're listed with a realtor. You are not looking for that part of a probate. So once you can get this list and you're going to have to do a little bit of work to get it, you're actually looking to get the actual probate. Now remember 3,100 counties. I can't teach everyone how to go through a probate. The best way to learn how to do it is use the probate county court employees and a good employee will show you exactly where to look. You're looking for one or actually two specific names on there. You're looking for the deceased names, which is easy to find on the docket. Then you're looking for the PR, which stands for personal representative or the executor. This is the person that is in charge of the probate. They basically have the same legal authority as the person that passed away. That's the person you have to connect with. Once you find that there is a probate open under, say, John Smith, you want to look in your county records under the property appraisers and see if they own the property. Once you see they own a property, then you can go back to the probate record and find the PR. If you're at the courthouse, you got to write it down or take pictures, get the deceased name if there's an address in there and get the PR. And then when you get back home, you can go on your property appraiser site and look up to see if they own property in that county. Remember, not every probate means they own property. So you have to sift through them. Once you find the PR's information and you confirm the deceased has a property in the county that you're doing investing in, you simply have to skip trace the personal representative or executor. And once you have that phone number, you have all the information you need now to go ahead and reach out to the PR of that specific probate. Now, there's simply two ways to contact anybody in probate. There's more than two ways, but these are the most useful ways. And this is how I teach it. And I like to use what I call the McDonald's Burger King approach. So everybody knows McDonald's has the greatest fries in the world. Ain't good for you, but dang, they taste good. So with that, the best hamburger is at Burger King, the Whopper. Everybody knows that. So like some people go to McDonald's, some go to Burger King, and I'm telling you, everybody has favorites. So you are going to be both. So there's two ways to tax them. A cold call. Why cold calling? Because it's the fastest way to connect with people. There is no other better technique than to connect with someone cold call because you don't have to leave your house. You connect with them on the phone. I want you to understand this. When you cold call them, you do 20% of the talking, you let them talk for 80% of the time. You have to be a really good listener in probate investing. You have to be because every other investor is running them over and you have to listen to them. Once they start to tell you about everything going on, that point you can now qualify them. And how do you qualify them? Let them do the qualifying for you. Be supportive. Let them talk. The more they talk, the more personal they get, the better your conversation, the better your rapport is going to be. Now, when you do that initial phone call and you reach out, the ones that want to talk to you, you have to understand, do not beat them up for price. It's going to take five to six contacts, either in person on the phone until you get an agreement. So if you're an investor trying to rush it and one phone call, you're not doing probates right. I have enough data to back me up on this. Patience, good listening skills, and let the sellers qualify themselves. Once you have a rapport and a connection, you will not have any other competition. You need to understand that. If you want to learn more how to do that, go over to freewholeselling.com. The second way is mailing. And this one, you actually have to mail a letter. I'm like, oh my God, Rick, mailing us going to be expensive. No, no, no. You do this all in-house. So I'm going to give you a template letter and I'm going to share with you the secret at the end of this video. And it's already done for you. So you don't have to overthink it. The letter works. I have plenty of data. I got hundreds of deals through probate and you can copy what I do. I just want you to put some variations in there so we're not all using the exact same letter. So the really cool thing is you've never done direct mail. This is like regular direct mail. You can you can laser print the envelope or whatever on the front and you just put a regular first class stamp on it and your return address is your name and whatever your uh, PO box or whatever it is. I 
don't recommend using a PO box. Just try to have a real address on there. So you don't have to overthink that part of it. And that right there gives you the McDonald's Burger King approach. Some people are okay with a cold call. Some people hate it. And then when they get a letter, like they respond to letters. Older people tend to respond to the letters more and a lot of probates, unfortunately, that's who it's tied to. So people always ask me, can I just skip the letter? I'm telling you the letter, you're only sending out between 50 and like 75 per month. It's not a lot of money, guys. Honestly, this is the cheapest way to do the marketing. And if you guys follow me enough, you know probates have the highest profit potential in all of wholesaling and honestly in all of real estate because they're usually the best deals. They're deferred maintenance, they're vacant, they need tons of updating and you have a new PR or an executor that really just wants to get rid of it. And what better way than to work with a wholesaler like you or me. So I want to share a couple of the keys to probate so you fully understand how this works. And I share my, my marketing secret to you right here at the end. Number one, you have to get the list directly from the courthouse. Anybody that tells you you can get it from a third party, you're going to get massively bad information. You're going to get dated information. And after you go through thousands of dollars, you're going to agree with me and go, Rick was right. I just need to get it from the courthouse, either online or in person. All probate leads come directly from the probate court. You're going to have to build a support team around you because as a wholesaler, you've learned by now you need to learn how to be a great marketer. You need to have figure out how to connect with motivated sellers, which is what we teach you at freewholesaling.com. And the second part is you need to learn how to talk to sellers. That comes with time. Now, what I don't need you to do is be an expert on probates. I knew nothing about probates when I started. To be honest with you, I was somewhat intimidated. And if you resonate with that and my ADHD, it gets all over the place. How the heck am I going to navigate through this? The most important person that I built on my support team was my title company. Why? They deal with a ton of probates. They know the exact documents that need to be filed. They know what to ask for. And honestly, without the title company, I probably would have been lost doing it. Remember, if you don't have an answer for a question, go get it for your client. Don't lie to them. The second one I talked about earlier is your probate court employees. They will help you. It's paid with US tax dollars in that county. Utilize them. Use it or lose it. Don't be that proud person with a giant ego and you're scared to death to ask a question. If you don't know the answer, you have to ask the question. Just make sure you're asking a high quality question so you get a high quality answer. And the third person on your team is going to be a probate lawyer. This is typically going to be tied with your title company. I don't want you to go out and just hire a probate attorney, but you need to know how this process works. You're going to deal with people that like, listen, Rick, we haven't even filed for probate. Maybe you find a driving for a dollar lead because we think it's too expensive and we know how to do it. Having a contact with a probate lawyer will give you one of the best deals you will ever deal with, but you have to set up that relationship prior to doing a probate deal. Now remember, speed is everything in probate. Whoever gets to the lead first has the upper hand. They have the best advantage. The faster you get the leads, the fresher the dates on them, the better off you're going to do. Remember this, God gave you two ears, one mouth. Remember the 80-20 rule. Let the client talk 80% of the time. Your 20% is very targeted qualifying questions. Don't forget this. And last but not least, consistency rules like anything else in wholesaling and marketing. Listen, probates is not like you're going to get 50 leads and you're going to do a ton of deals in one month. It's slow, it's monotonous, but it's super easy. You could work two full-time jobs and do this in your sleep. The reality is most people quit after 30 to 90 days because they didn't get instant results. If you can break through that and consistently keep going, you will be opened up to a plethora of incredible deals. And here's the really cool part. A probate deal is worth about three to four times what a regular wholesale deal is. And honestly, they're vacant. So you don't run through all the obstacles of running your cash buyer in and they're going to run into your seller and you're going to get that confrontation. They're mostly vacant. They're easy to control. So you can get top dollar on the sales price. You get the lowest price when you buy it because it needs work. That's why you get these massive profits in probate because of these reasons. But if you're just going to do it a month or two and you don't get exactly what you want, quit. Don't even start. Honestly, I would commit one year to probates. That's what it takes, guys. Honestly, I go months sometimes without leads. That's just what it is. And you know what? The reality is sometimes you get one or two leads in a month. But honestly, if you take the time and spend time with people and connect with them, they'll be some of the easiest deals you do and the most profitable. Don't overlook that. So let me share the secret of why working with me and Zach with probates will put you light years ahead of anybody else. I have a competitive advantage because I basically offer solutions to people in probate. And here's what we do. We send out a simple marketing letter and you can use this in your cold call as well. And our call to action is superb to anybody else's. Now, a lot of people will tell you, let me just wait till the probate's done and then I'll buy it from you, Rick. And honestly, that is the setup question. That is the double whammy right here. And here's how you respond to every one of them. Now you can put it in writing. And what we do is simply on our letters, which I'm going to share with you at freeholesling.com. If you go there, you can download Rick's probate template letter. You're crazy if you don't do it. And it simply says, did you know you can sell your property before the probate is complete? Give me 
a call. Let's talk about it. That's it. It makes people super curious. Like, wait a minute. My attorney said I can't do that. That's not correct. That's what attorneys tell everybody. And that was the biggest complaint when I started probates. So I put it into my marketing. And whenever I'm on a phone call with them, they go, well, Rick, my attorney says I can't do anything till the probate's done. It's inaccurate. The reality is you want to help them liquidate that asset as soon as possible. Why? Because they still got to cut the lawn. They got to pay the insurance. They got to pay the mortgage, the property taxes. And if it takes a year or maybe two years, it could cost them $30,000, $40,000. So, hey, Mr. Seller, what if I could show you how to sell your property before the probate is completed? That way you save a ton of money, you save a ton of time, and you get certainty knowing this is done. A lot of clients love this solution. I'm here to tell you with your probate team, with the title company, the probate attorney, the probate court, you can solve these as you go along. Stop worrying about it if you don't know the answer to every question. Get your team together. And remember, you're all working towards bringing the title company more deals, bringing your probate lawyer more probates so they can move forward with it. And then obviously, you just want to work with your probate court so you don't keep bugging them. So if they answer a few of your questions when you go in, and don't be scared to visit them five or six times. Guys, this little marketing trick, it works really well. You never want to wait till the probate's complete to buy the property because then it's not probate anymore. It is open to the open market. The title is corrected and you have to bid like everybody else. You want to catch it before the probate is done. How do you do that? Just use this little marketing secret. I say there's no secrets, but the reality is very few people use this. And when I find someone that really needs my help, they're usually frustrated. They want to get rid of the property and they really ring true. Rick, I can sell this property before it's done. Show me how to do it. And then I use that to set my appointments for each probate. And guys, don't tell them how to do it over the phone unless you're doing it virtually. But what I do is, listen, if we can come to an agreement, I'll show you exactly how to do this. And if you can meet them in person, it's so much more powerful. Guys, use this. I love probates. And I just showed you how to pull the list, how to market it to them, and how to use my secret marketing weapon to monopolize this business and have the upper hand on any other competitors in your area. It's up to you. Let me know in the comments. Are you going to use this little secret for my marketing for probates? And are you actually doing probates? Guys, it changed my investing career. I started way too late. I want to save you from making the same mistakes I did. Do probates. They really work well for wholesaling. And guys, if you got value from this video, do me a favor. Make sure you smash that like button. Hit that subscribe button to continue to receive the best information on wholesaling today. Guys, this is Rick Ginn, and I'll see you in the next video.